Right, just down on the plot just a quickie. Put my canes up. And let's just get a long shot. On this, there's the eight foot canes there. So you can see us. It's around about 10 foot tall, about two meters. And that's where I'm gonna put my butter beans. And then beside it, along this metal rail, my beans. Firstly, they're in well manured soil. It's got about got about that much manure in it, and it's already got manure forked into the soil. I put that much manure on originally, and then I forked it all in, dug it in. Now I put another layer of manure over on top. So it's got about it's got lots of manure in it, and then I've got metal pools something in the ground three metal poles one in the middle one at the end and then I've got metal poles sunk into just dropped in to these metal these metal poles here um, I welded a piece of box section on at the time so I could then whack them in so they were actually whacked in and I welded a 90 degree piece of angle on with a nut that I welded on and some bolts and then put a piece of box section in one length that me and the wife had to carry down all the way down fit it again here and on top is a piece of flat bar um, I saw it on uh, a YouTube video of Gardener's World where some chap in Birmingham had done this and I'd already brought the box section down and constructed this frame so I thought how can I do it and I just got a piece of flat bar and welded on some loops onto them and then I just tie wrapped the bar down on top of the box section and just to brace it even though it don't need it is I've got these galvanized Tent, um, galvanized trampoline tubes which used to hold a safety net on, on the trampoline and then I've just zip tied it with tie wraps um, and all you do all you do is you take the cane and you stick, sorry, you take a cane, you stick it through the loop, you push it up, and then down at the bottom, where it's going into the ground, just level it up a minute, and you just push it in, and that won't go in any further. So, it's through the loop, at the top, the cane, into the ground, and that's it, it ain't going anywhere, and I'll take another one, there's the loop, Put the cane through the loop, lift it up, sorry, it's in there, so it's sticking right at the top, in that loop, Get it roughly level. I'll go down to the bottom and just push it in. And that's the cane. It's not going anywhere. And seems it's so exciting, I'll do another one. So you push your cane up. So it's through the loop, level them up so they're all level, go down to the bottom, push it in, and there you go. So there you go, there's no tying every year, I don't have to do any, make any bean frames or anything, 
I don't use any string, I don't use any tie racks. All I do is do this. And they aren't going anywhere. And that's my beam frame. And I shall come all the way down, all the way down here to here. And on the other side, if we go around, we've got it on both sides, so you can see. And that's it. Saves me time and minuscule amount of money. Now these ones, I normally grow up this frame here. Let me take a wide look at it. Here's Mog, my friendly local cat. So that's my frame. If you look back at my videos, you'll see the peas that I've had on it. They grow to eight to ten foot, um, and that's what I made that frame for. I made all that frame, so that steel tube, all welded, pushed into the ground. It's just tie wrapped onto the metal beam pole frame that I've already got across here and uh, I've just hung chicken mesh down it just put some bamboo canes through they've been there for three or four years isn't it? well three years and I uh, welded some welding rods at the top V-shaped uh, welding rods stop the pigeons landing on the top nipping the top of the peas out but this year I'm just going to double these canes up tie wrap the canes together like that I'll show you near the time and I'm just going to stab them in the ground and hook them through the mesh at the top and that's what my butter beans are going to grow up but I'll do that video another time so that's my bean poles like I say it's already constructed and it's just a case of threading the bamboo canes through stab them in the ground and it's job done I'll do another video when I've done it all, but I ain't doing that tonight. My broad beans, they're all coming up now. I shall whack some posts in that and put some string around to hold them all in. Um, these broad beans are green Windsor. Absolutely beautiful. They stay a luminous green. Well, not a luminous green, but they're very green. They don't go dark and grey like when you cook normal broad beans just fantastic here's another cat I think that's the mother of Mog here's Mog with a white chest um, these are Japanese onions doing really well and snowball onions and these are just onion sets turbo martial lots are looking a bit rough because it was a lovely hot sunny day and I uh, planted them up straight out of the cold frame so they never got hardened off which is my fault just a bit impatient but that's all my onions this year because the other onions down the other end that I'll show you they've gone to seed but there you go oh the frame's up that's now completed so I've put this frame up I don't know if I've videoed after I put the frame up but I put this frame up, they're all in sections, there's three sections, two long sections and a short section there and it's another section on top which is narrow and then I just drape the net over, I hold the net in place with staples and weigh it down at the bottom with steel so the wind don't blow up and I don't get in trouble with butterflies so I don't have to come down there squashing caterpillars like a lot of other people do this is it if you look at my videos before you'll see me growing in it before and there my sprouts Bedfordshire fill basket looking forward to planting them I've been wanting to grow them Bedfordshire fill basket for quite a while and then I've got a sliding door done a video of these they're just um, pallet squirts that go in between pallets for stacking stack like cards net thrown over it weighed down with metal and inside is my calabrese looking very well P 
peas. Seven point two meters of peas, and as you can see, I've now got two pieces of string on on the sides, so the pigeons walk along on the floor, and they can't get in because of the because of the mesh, and then they can't land on it because of the string. And I'll put some more string on this up to here because these peas will grow up to over a meter high, even though they're dwarf. And then I've got string along the top, stopping from. And on top and eating the top down. So that's the first row of peas. This is the second row of peas. Again, mesh, two row lengths of string, two rows of string on top. So I've got, theoretically, I've got four rows of peas, or one very thick row. These onions are all going to seed. They're onions that I found last year that I bought in February 2015 and then lost them. Found them and then decided to plant them so I can still use them. Right in there, Cherokee, Cherokee beans are up from the Real Seed Company. Um, my own seed for runner beans have come up. My chilies are in here, butternut squash, early spread broccoli, sweet corn, sunflowers, more brassicas over there. Hello Mog. This is my cat Mog. He ain't my cat, she ain't my cat. She ain't my cat. But she's just on my plot. And she used to poo all on my plot. So what I did was I started giving her food biscuits and tins of tuna, um, sardines and now she don't, she don't poo on my plot anymore. Best way to stop a cat messing on your plot, just feed it. Yes. Trouble is, she keeps bringing me mice and so do my four cats at them and the two cats next door. Right, in here, Stupus Tomatoes, Real Seed Company. They're the earliest tomatoes I've ever had. These will grow, to, these will have tomatoes on them before any other tomato. I've got two Gens Tangerine Tomatoes from Real Seed Company here and here. Two Black Cherry from Seed Parade, I believe. And then I've got one, two, three Gardener's Delight. I've got five more Gardener's Delight in here. More sunflowers, my ginger ain't up yet. My carrots are doing really well. They're quite tasty. I've missed a bloody bit of grapevine on there. Grapes coming. Um, I've trimmed this all back as much as I want to anyway. Uh, Chinese cabbage, coming beautiful. I'm gonna plant that out this week. Two cucumbers planting down here. Um, cauliflower and they're my five five dessert melon so that's what I've built the cold frame for these melons because if it's cold and chilly at night you won't get any melons they you need warmth night time and during the day which we should get but hopefully we'll have some melons this year like I say that's why I plant group. That's why I built the um, cold frame outside that I've just shown you my plants in. Uh, lettuce is coming, and these are my Frenchy seeds, um, butter beans. I guess they're just a extra large runner bean, but they're butter beans. Now this variety of butter bean should grow um, in this country. I got these butter beans because miss uh, learn learn to grow on YouTube um, he said these are the only butter beans he's actually had any joy with in this country so I'm hoping I'm not too far north and that they'll they'll be okay um, I think they're de Spagna or something something like that in the end 
Um, like I say, grapevine is all coming well. Stalk is getting quite thick now. Stalk is there. Stalk, whatever you want to call it. Um, oh, mug. Well, you ain't muggy. You? you want your belly rubbed? You want your belly rubbed? I can't feed two of you because I ain't got the money. Come on. Psst, psst, psst. Mm, she's a bit nervous. Or he. Alright, Mug. Mug. Bloody cats. Primulas. They're, uh, Primulas are all looking nice and I've planted strawberries in between because I've got all this vermiculite grit. This is uh, grit from vermiculite and look there's a piece of unexpanded vermiculite piece of mica that's got many layers all crushed up and then when you heat it up it just exfoliates go into a like worm like but because I've got all that on the ground I've put strawberries in so the strawberries will be protected. They don't have to water too much either because um, it's all like a good mulch. This is my tabry. Um, the only problem I've got is I can only train it one way. So that's a tabry. If you want to know what how to plant a tabry, I've uh, that's how you plant the tabry. Best thing to do is to plant it on a fence twice as long so you plant the tabry in the middle. Yes, say that in the middle. And you train it all this way. It's like a hedge. And it would, if the ends didn't get damaged, like these are getting damaged and they stop growing, it would just carry on growing all the way down. Yeah, so that's my tabry. So with a tabry you then get shoots coming up there's a new shoot coming up there I'll probably get 20 or 30 shoots coming up and they'll all drape over everywhere and what you should then do is, is train it this way but I can't because I've got a shed in the way if I'd known what how the best way to grow a plant tabry I'd have planted it on a long fence but there you go can't be helped potatoes they're in. Believe you me, they're in there. Six inch down with potato fertilizer and chicken pellets. I've grown Nicole, which is a salad crop potato. Yellow potato. Absolutely bloody lovely. All my broccoli is finished now, but I'm chopping it. All that white stuff on the floor is white fly. All that white there is white fly. As you can see, bugs all over it. So chickens are getting that. It's all done, finished. We've had it all. Greenhouse prep ready. Just got a few weeds to pull out. Manure in there, compost in there. All ready. Look at that bugger. How did that grow up there? Look. Oh, bloody dandy lines, do we? So, greenhouse ready. Plant the cucumber in there and it'll grow up that mesh again, same as last year. Look at the videos. Uh, gooseberries. Come free. Now in there, I've got a new There he is. See that? That's a new I'll put some water in this bag, but 
he was in the bag when I found the bag I booted the bag and thought oh, what on earth is that and there was a newt in it so how on earth I got a newt here I don't know but I did Ah, um. oh, there didn't think about this in here you might not be able to see you can see on that one it's about what 12 inches high over there you can see the green in the plastic I've got the plastic rounding canes to stop the pigeons from eating but the one right down the end is possibly 14 15 inches high they are the walking stick cabbages this bloody cats follow me about everywhere yeah, so they're about 12 inches to 15 inches tall. You can make out the green in it. It's about the same as what I can make out. And that's walking stick curl. Once they get a bit higher, possibly to the top of the plastic, then I'll then take the plastic away and just pray that the pigeons don't go in there. And then I just want them to get very tall. And... Um, thicken up so that when I let the chickens in they don't kill them they're supposed to get about five six foot some say ten foot but we'll see and I'll just leave them and let them go to seed next year see if I can get some seed because the seed that I bought from the person I bought this from I mean I'm pleased I got four five six seven walking stick kale plants out of it but I had about 20 25 seeds so in a very good germination rate and you can see all the weeds that are coming up in there. Chickens haven't been in there for a few weeks now. And everything's growing up in there. I've chucked some kale in there and some uh, other stuff as well for it to grow up. So when they go in there, they've got something to eat. Um, that was full. It, that manure, was, well it was beaming. And it sunk. Probably about... 12 15 inch on both sides so put that in there try to keep my friends i planted peas in there last year i might put some uh, french beans in dwarf ones and here's my ladies we uh, dusted them with mite powder today um we're gonna start dusting them probably every month every two months keep them good and healthy as you can see by all these stalks in here I've took out about 10 stalks today just to tidy the place up she's come out she was on the she's gone to bed for tonight she's obviously just come out thinking she's gonna get fed but yeah so that's the you saw the brassicas the uh Sprouting broccoli, and that's what it ends up like one sees dinosaurs start eating them. So that's it. That's all the plots. Um, just the one thing to say: this bit of soil here, all this. Like I say, I've got potatoes in at the end, and then this bit here, I'm gonna fill with butternut squash. That'll be a lot of butternut squash, so that's it, that's the tour, or a walkabout, mumblings, whatever you want to call it, but that's my allotment, both of them, oh, this plant at the end, this plant at the end, it's all in flower now, it's a winter radish, I'll show you it down at the bottom here, it's down there. See it? It's like a black ball. You peel that and it's white flesh, like a ra like a radish. That sounds a radish because it is a radish. But it's all going to flower now. I um, lifted one up last year and put it into a pot. And the pot fell over and the plant broke. So this year I've left the end one in to go to seed and hopefully get some good seed. I'm not counting on it, but I'm hoping. The only problem I've got is is down the bottom there, probably about 30 metres away, is a shard, which is now coming into seed. 
so I'm hoping my winter radish will beat the shard otherwise I will sell my winter radish and I'm highly likely that I'll bloody get a shard and now my luck because it'll cross pollinate may not different plants last year I planted my um, beetroot seed and it was potluck you've got a beetroot or you got a shard <laughs> so there you go right well then you know, that's me over I'm now waffling I'm now off thank you for subscribing thank you to my subscribers much appreciated see you later <laughs>